Hey guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. I am going to be doing another redo today, a song that is well deserved of a redo. If you're going to redo any of my older lessons, Mr. Crowley is at the top of the list. So I've um, done a few redos and this is the main one that people want me to do next. Um, and so we're going to do this all in one video here. And unlike the first video, which I kind of based more off of the live version, uh, his tribute version. This is going to be more based on the studio version, except for the very uh, the bridge. Now that bridge has kind of got all these kind of guitar harmonies and stuff, and I like how he kind of uh, put it together, did his own little arrangement. Uh, so when he plays live, so I'm going to do that so we can actually make it sound similar to the song, because otherwise it's just a bunch of harmonized guitar lines. Um, but uh, I'm also going to cover the keyboard intro in a little quick little arrangement of how to play that on guitar as well so the people requested that now before I get into it please subscribe to the channel so you know it's a new video you can like and comment on it, it can really help me out with the YouTube algorithm and hitting that like button commenting on the videos watching the videos all the way through really really helps and if you want to support what I want to do here on YouTube or, or anywhere online best way to do it was my guitar Academy I have an, uh, an online guitar school uh, it contains all of my guitar courses, from beginner courses to more advanced courses on technique, improvisation, improvisation ear training theory, guitar tone, you name it. I've said it a million times, but you'll see a link to it in the description below. Uh, and that link will give you a free seven-day trial if you've, if you've never been an Academy member. So please go check it out and come join the community. So let's, let's jump in here. I'm going to go back and start with this keyboard intro. Um, I just did a quick little arrangement because somebody requested to throw that on there as well too. Obviously, it's not going to sound exactly like it. We can do the harmonies, we can do the melodies, but uh, without the whole organ type of thing, it, you're not, we don't have that going. So uh, this is just an approximation, um, and you can just skip it and just start with the heavy parts, which we're going to get to next. But if you want to play the keyboard intro, you can play it like this. <laughs> So it's kind of the same thing repeated twice. Uh, I'm going to start here just by playing a regular D minor chord. All right, so that's just a standard first fret of the high E, third on the B, second on the G, open D string. And then you got to kind of do that moving bass line. So I've strung the chord, and I'm going to go over to the second fret on the D, third fret on the D, then the open G. So the first chord, and then we're going to go to an A minor chord. So really the melody is... So you can hit the whole A minor chord and just stop on that note. So you have that A minor chord, and then you're going to... You're kind of stopping on that melody of the G string. And then go the D string, the open A. And then... 0 on the G. So, so far we have this. So, as you have that open G, it gives you time to grab an F major chord. So, just kind of strum an F major chord, and then... So, what I did that is I strum the F major. You can just... Like that. If you don't have to do a full bar, you can just play the... Uh, first fret on the low E, third on the A and the D, second on the G, and then play open G, back to the second fret on the G, open B, so it's like that, and then go to a C major chord, 
And I'm stopping here at the B string, I'm not hitting that open high E. Because I want that melody note to be on top. So just strum the C all the way to that B string, and then play that open G, and then this, the note on the fifth string. So, so far we have this. All right, from there, we're gonna play one zero on the B string. Back to the A minor chord, and once again, I'm kind of stopping at the G string. I'm still gonna hold this note, just in case you strum past it. It won't sound that bad, but it's really just the open A, second fret on the D, and the second fret there on the G. So I just still hold that. Go one, three, I'm sorry, zero, one, three on the B string. So really kind of just play that first and then. And then I'm going to go to an E minor chord. Now strum all the way across the high E string, then play the B open, and then that D string. So all together, we have this. this, uh, the chords that in it really kind of sounds like just kind of root fifth chords. And then at the end we have a sus. So that's going to be, um, I'm, I kind of switch the finger style whenever I do that, you just grab the pick with my, uh, my middle finger there between those two uh, knuckles. So I'm, gonna, I'm picking the open A and then the, the octave of that, the second fret, and then the open high E, the fifth above it. I'm just doing that first. So those three strings there. So I'm picking it with a thumb, index, and ring finger. And then I'm gonna move everything up one fret. So I'm gonna place a bar across five fret, uh, five strings there, the first fret, and then move that second fret up to the third fret there on the G. So we have the first fret on the A now, three on the G, one on the E. So with this. And we're gonna take that same chord shape and move it. over to the F. So we have the, the first fret on the E, third fret on the D, first fret on the B. So you just play that now, and you're, so you're gonna be picking those strings, same fingerings. Move it up to the G, two frets, then back down to the F, and then move everything down one fret by just moving this off the bar, and then just this down to the second fret. So just the E's, and then back to the F. So we have this. So we have this. And then we're going to end it with an A sus4. So this is just like an A major chord, but the note on the B string is going to be up at the third fret. And then resolves that down to a A major chord. So just down to the second fret. So it's been A minors up until this point. All right, so then it's going to do, to, to lead us back, the end of it here, we have 3, 2 on the D string, which leads us back to the Oh, just kind of the repeat. And then the same. All right, then we kick in with the uh, actual guitar parts, which is what I played at the beginning. That so I played this at the beginning. So uh, we're going to start here with just this D power chord. So it's just a D major chord, really, but you don't have the note on the high E strings. And then you hit the open A string. And then the first fret of the low E string. 
and then back to that D power chord. So it is. And then he mixes it up. How he added that, he'll do some slides. Before he's the B flat, or sometimes he'll. It's kind of just a random thing he does. So you can kind of transition to this next chord from there. So. And, but it, it, in any case, it's the B flat power chord there off the first fret of the A string. And then here, he does it on the recording, he does it uh, like a legato lick. He, so the first fret on the A, hammers on three, pulls off to one, and then open A. So it, and then up to the third fret real quick. You can put a pinch harmonic on there if you want. Now live, he typically picks that, which I like the sound of, and I think as he played the song more, he kind of uh, in, liked the sound of that little you know, heavily palm muted line. So you could pick it like that too. I think it sounds cooler. Uh, and that's pretty much most of the live recordings you hear them from the tribute album to the, the, the live video. It's one of the few songs we actually have some video of him playing, even though he spent most of the time on um, Ozzy, he's, he's, he's picking it. Then up to the third fret there, and then you kind of start over again. Another. All right, now, after we're gonna move up to this C power chord, but he does a, he goes a little chromatic lick, so, so just one, two, three on the A. So at least these two notes, heavily palm muted into that C power chord on the third fret of the A string. Then we have this. So that right there is, is five, seven on the A, kind of heavily palm muted. And then you're gonna play this C triad at the um, fifth fret across the D, G, and the B. And then you're going to move it here to this, this F major triad, which is, uh, you're going to keep the bar there, but just add the sixth fret in front of it on the B and the seventh fret in front of it on the D. And then back to the D power chord. And then we have this. It's that little fill right there. So that's going to be five, seven on the D over to five across the G and the B. And then you play seven on the G, six on the B, then back down to those two fives, and then pick back to the seven to six, but slide up two frets, and then back down to the seven six. And then back down to the C power chord. And then down to the B flat power chord. And then he does a little bit of a bar dive there um, on the open A string after the, to kind of transition, start back over um, with everything, which is, I kind of segmenting them out. There's really, you can call them all choruses or all verses, <laughs> but it feels like there's just pretty much all verses here, um, even though he's saying Mr. Crowley in it. But um, anyway, so now I consider this point for after this to be the beginning of verse two. So it was kind of the repeat of the whole verse again. So it looks like this. <laughs> So this is pretty much the same verse, very similar. We have to start everything the same. And the same. But when we get to that little D power chord over there, kind of halfway through, we had that little fill. Um, so that's really the only thing that's new in, in this uh, second verse here. Um, so that's going to start here. So third fret on the B string, hammer on four, pull back off to three. Over to five on the G, 
back to three on the B. So we have this. And then play five, pull off to three, back to five on the G. Then we have this. So that's gonna be a pull off from three to two on the G. And then a pull off from five to three on the D. And then you can pull off again, five, three, two on the D. And you can pull off to the open D here and then go to the C power chord or go over to the um, fifth fret there on the A instead. Just kind of pulling off five, three, two, over to five there. And then down to the power chord, the C power chord. So we have this. Then at that C, the C power chord, the B flat. And then that takes us to solo number one. So these solos obviously are just, both of them are just legendary. Um, just some of the greatest solos ever done, both of them in the same song. And um, there is a, a rhythm guitar track added to it, which he obviously doesn't play live, but I'm gonna play through the rhythm guitar track too real quick, just so you know the chords that are going on underneath this. Uh, so for the, the rhythm guitar track for solo one, looks like this. So that's going to start with just that D power chord. And then I just kind of play that, just the third fret there on the A string. It's a quick little, uh, kind of just a moving bass line there. Taking it down to the B flat power chord. Sure this. And then up to the C power chord again, and then the D again. And then when we go back down, kind of do the same notes. But they hold that C kind of longer, so it's kind of a true chord there. And then the B flat, let's play this. And then we have just like an E diminished. So open E, uh, first fret on the A, second fret on the D, open G. And then A power chord. And then you just repeat that same thing. All right, so let me take a look at the solo over that real quick and then I'll show you how to play it note for note. So that one moves around quite a bit. So we're going to start here with this first phrase. So it's kind of just a blues like you're going to bend up at the 12th fret there on the B, uh, G string into the 10th fret there on the B real quick. Kind of make him feel like, like just one big down string. And then roll over to the 10th fret on the high E string and then pull off 13, 10 on the B. So it's a so I hit an upstroke on the high E, a downstroke on the B. So you do it like four times. And then we have a kind of a descending uh, So 
But the lick is kind of repeated down across a, a D minor pentatonic scale. And the pattern is you're gonna start with the 13th fret on the high E string, pull off to 10, over to uh, 13 on the B. All right, and then you're gonna go to the 10th fret on the high E, and then pull off 13, 10 on the B. So all together, it's a six note pattern. One, two, three, one, two, three. And I'm just going down, pull, down, up, down, pull. And you take that same shape and just that same pattern and take it across these two strings. So you gotta stay with this 12 and 10 on the G now because you gotta stay within the scale. And then the same thing of the G and the D string. And the same thing with D and the A. So we, just... so we kind of palm muting it, so it almost sounds like he's picking more than he is, but he's doing a lot of legato. Now from there we start going up. So this one's pretty much picked. We're gonna start with it's kind of a similar lick, but like an ascending version of it. We're gonna play 12, 10, 12 on the D. So you're gonna pick everything here. Then 10 on the G, back to 12 on the D, and back to 10 on the uh, G again. So that's the pattern. And then we do the same thing here on these two strings. So 12, 10, 12 on the G, 10 on the B, 12 on the G, 10 on the B again. Then you're gonna play, we can't, he kinda starts moving up to something different here. So he's gonna play 13, 10 here, and then, uh, and then come up here and jump up to 13, 15 on the B string. Over to 13 on the high E string, and then he's gonna start ascending. So it sounds like he's doing 16, 15, 13 on the high E, then 18, 16, 15, then 20, 18, 17. And do a couple of bends there. So we have this. And then release that bend. Now this next part is kind of one of those things where he's doing a little, he's kind of working his way down. Down to that note, which is the 19th fret there on the A string. And in between, he's just... He's... So it's kind of just, he's using the notes 17, 18, 20 on the high E string and the B. And he's doing a lot of like lick like this. He goes 17, hammer on 18, pull back up to 17, over to 20 on the B, and then back that 17. So, and then it's uh, going to go straight down 1917 on the G and the D and the A, and then he's going to end on that note with a huge vibrato on the 19th fret on the A. So I'm not trying to do that part note for note because it's one of those um, sort of erratic type of sections and he just kind of goes off when he gets there. So it's kind of like... I just kind of work my way down to some some random legato licks pretty much until I get to here. And then he goes into this. So it's into a bend at the 20th fret. Release and pick it a couple times. And then a couple times to the 18. And then 17. Hammer back on the 18. Pull off to 17. Over to... Uh, The 19th fret on the G with a, a big bend there. And then we go into our next little sequence, looks like this. Now you can pick this, or you can mostly legato it. Um, obviously much easier to legato it. So how way is comfortable for you, but um, it's going to be 13 on the 13 10 on the B on the sorry the high E. So it's kind of the same thing we did before that 
That little legato lick that we just descended, but he's just gonna keep it repeated on the top two strings. So pulling off 13 to 10 on the high E, over to 13 on the B, then back to the 10th fret there on the high E, and then pull off 13, 10 on the, the B. So you just repeat that for a little bit. Or you can pick it. So after you repeat that a little bit, it kind of goes down like this. On the G string, hammer 10 to 12 on the G, pull off to 10, slide down to nine. And then he kind of does the same thing. From nine, he's gonna hammer on 10, pull off to nine, slide down to seven. And then the same thing again, just kind of fall on the scale. Hammer on seven, pull off to nine, slide down to five. So From here, when you get down here, he goes up this scale. Goes up five, hammer on seven, go up to the B string, five, hammer on six, pull back off to five, over to seven on the G again. So we have this. And then you're gonna go back up five, seven, oh, it's like five, six, eight on the B. And then um, five on the high E. Hammer on six, pull back off to five, over to eight on the B, back to that five. So we have this. So after that little lick, we had this a bend at the eighth fret on the B, then he catches a pinch harmonic release, and then six on the B, over to seven on the G. And then we have this, which is a very cool ending. All right, so that's gonna start with. So it's gonna start with a pull off from seven to five on the G, and then pull off six to five on the B. Back to the seven five pull off on the G, and then you're gonna play seven six five on the D. Over to eight on the A string. And then you, from after the eight, you're gonna have this lick. It's gonna play five on the D, hammer on six, pull back off to five. Over to eight on the A string, back to five on the D string. And then you can play five on the A again, pull off to um, five, and then slide down to three. All right, so so far we have this. So from there, we're gonna play now five to three on the D, five to three on the A, back to that five on the A, over to the three on the D, back to that five on the A. So it is. So when you get to that five the last time, slide up to seven, and hit it a few times, and he quickly pulls off to the fourth fret on the um, A string, and then a big bar dive, really low bar dive on the low E. And, and you know, I'm sure I have to retune now, but that is going to be the end of uh, the first solo. And then we'll take a look at verse number three, which sounds like this. All right, so everything's pretty much something we've seen before in the first two verses, except instead of this fill, the... Except for that fill, we have now this. So that's pretty, pretty simple. We're gonna just kind of straight up the scale almost. We're gonna have five, seven, eight on the, um, on the uh, A string. 
And then you're gonna play five, seven on the D, pull back off to five and go to that eight on the A. And from there, we're gonna go all the way back up, all the way up without any kind of change of direction. From there. Just gonna go. After this eight on the um, eight, uh, the A, A string, we're gonna have five, seven, eight on the D string, five, seven on the G, five, six, eight on the B, and then five, six on the uh, high E string. So it's pretty much legato if you want. And then he catches that C chord. All right, now we've, we're to the bridge. So like I said, I'm gonna play kind of how he did in the live because the, the bridge is kind of unrecreatable with one guitar. There's all these harmonized lines. So he did a really cool thing live. He kind of put the whole melody and harmony together and it sounds really good. So I think that's um, more valuable uh, for what we're doing here if you wanna play, actually play the song than learning each individual harmony line. All right, so it looks like this. So that moves around a lot. It's probably one of the more challenging parts of the song, but it's it's very, very cool. Of course, he plays it like he's just staring into space. It's nothing to him. But um, uh, So we're going to start here with just a, a D minor chord. So he just strums across a D minor chord, and he's going to pick across it. So the D, G, B, E, then go to the open high E, and then third fret down the B, so this, then down to the first fret there on the B. So there's a little melody that he plays on top of it. So he's gonna come, come up here and grab this B flat major triad. So it's gonna be the third fret across the D, G, and the B. And then you're gonna go. That's gonna be the sixth fret on the B, fifth fret on the high E string, and then lift up the note on the uh, with the play with the ring finger, but move this note now down from the 6th fret down to the 5th. So we have the 3rd fret on the high E, 5th fret on the B. So with this. And then, you hear him do a quick little line there. It's going to be the 3rd fret on the A, hammer 5, slide up to 7, and then 8. And then grab this C major triad. So we have this, there's a C major triad there at the, across the D string and the B, G, I'm sorry, the D, G, and the B at the fifth fret. And then he's going to come back here. He holds a C major chord, but he's not picking most of it. After he did this, he does that little line. So he kind of plays it like a C major chord, but he's really kind of messing around the top three strings. He's going to play the first fret there on the B, hammer on three, then open high E string, then play three, uh, one on the B, over to three on the G. And then to a D minor chord. And he's gonna play this one a little bit different. He plays it with these three fingers instead of with his pinky. And he's gonna do that. So he strums across it, and then you're gonna play the melody note, three, one on the high E, and then to pick the B string. So, so far we have this. Then back to this B flat major triad, and then. So we have this, those same third fret across the D, G, and the B. And then you're gonna play a melody up the B string. So three, four, six, 
four, three, over to the um, third fret there on the G. And then we're gonna have that now, the next chord it was the fifth fret there on the D. It's just that, that E diminished chord in first inversion. So we have this thir uh, fifth fret there on the uh, D string, uh, third fret there on the, the G string with that bar, fifth fret on the B, and that bar is also getting the third fret on the high E string. And then he does that, move up to six on the B, down to five, and then he's gonna end it with this. Um, so it's an A7 chord. So what that's based around, just an open A, second fret there on the uh, D, open G, second fret there on the B, open high E. He's really, you can hit the whole chord, but you're really, even though he's holding the whole chord, you're really just hearing that top melody mostly. So two, three on the B string, open high E, and then to the first fret on the high E. And then at least that version that's on online where he does um, on, on, the, on video. We, he, after he gets that one, he does a quick little trill. Zero, one, back to zero. And then three, two on the B. So it is. Then we pretty much repeat except for one little part. Now here, um, the second time through in the live version I was looking at anyway, he doesn't go to, he doesn't do that. He does this. So he does that kind of thing we've done kind of earlier in the song, I think. Which is just a fifth part across the B, uh, the G and the B. And then hammer it on six and uh, on the B and seven on the G. Slide up, two frets, then back down, then to the fives. To the third fret there on the, the G and the B. And then, and then the same thing. Same ending as before. And then he works his way up. Uh, on this, this final chord, the A7. When he gets that first fret, he just keeps going up. Third fret, fifth fret, sixth, and then he kind of transitions and gets ready for the solo, the outro solo. So then we have this, um, this outro solo, which is just obviously crazy awesome. So um, now before I do that, the rhythm guitar part underneath it looks like this. So it's just that D power chord to a G power chord. And then C and F. Then the B flat. And then that same E diminished to an A. And just kind of repeat that. Now that G power chord, I'm just playing, I'm just muting the note on the A string, which makes it just an open G power chord. And then So let me take a look at this last solo and then I'll show you how to play it note for note. So here we go.
All right, so we're going to start here with uh, the uh, D minor arpeggio. So the pattern, you just got to learn the pattern first. So it's a 17th fret on the high E string, pull off to the 13th fret, over to 15 on the B. So it's a kind of a, pick the top note with an upstroke, pull off, and then a downstroke there at the 15th fret there on the B. So it's just kind of up, pull, down. And just repeat that. And then we're going to just move the note on the high E string, the, the, the 17th fret, up one fret. The other two notes stay the same, and the pattern stays the same. So eight times, and then we're playing the um, uh, 15th fret on the high E, pull off to 12. A C major arpeggio over to uh, 13th fret there on the uh, B string. Same pattern. Done eight times. And then we have. And then we're going to go to this gonna F major. So we're going to play. We're going to bar this 13th fret there across the uh, B and the high E. Pick 17. Pull off to 13 on the high E. And then pick 13 on the. So all together. All right, next phrase. So it's going to start with some double stops here at the 15th fret on the B and the G. And you're going to hammer on 17 on the G and 16 on the B. So he does it a few times, so like four times, and then pick him again, move him up two frets, back down to the 17, 16, and back down to the 15. And then you can go back to the double stops you want, and then the 17, 16, and then we have this little tremolo pick. That's a really cool part. So it's 15 on the high E, 17 on the B, over to 17 on the G, back to 17 on the high. And then 14, 15, 17, 18, 17, and there's a little trill between 14 and 15 on the B, and then up to 17. So all of that, except for the last couple, so, for, so you get that trill, is all triple open. All right, then we have some more trills like this. All right, so that's going to start here at the ninth fret there on the high E string. So it's a trill between nine and uh, nine and ten on the high E, and then ten and eleven on the B, then nine and ten on the G, and then uh, six and seven on the G. And then what he does. It goes up the same half steps, just goes straight up through them. So he has 9, 10 on the G, 10, 11 on the B, over to 9 on the G, I'm mean, sorry, the high E, and then go quick pull off from 10 to 7 on the high E string, and then a little slow little half step bend. All right, now from there we have this next phrase. All right, so he's got a lot of phrases like this throughout his solos. He just, he loves this kind of stuff. So he is. So that's gonna be five on the high E string. Hammer on six, pull back up to five, over to eight on the B, and then back to that five on the high E. And then pull off eight six five on the B. So from there we're gonna have this. So yeah, we're going to go straight down from there. So we have six, pull off to five. So after you did this like that, then you're going to start back here with the six and pull off six to five on the B, seven to five on the G, and then eight, pull off five, and we'll pull off to seven to five on the D. So 
after you get down to that eight, right? So I pull up all the way down to five and then over to eight on the um, A string. Go back up to the fifth fret there on the D. And then fifth fret on the D, back to the eight on the A, pull off seven, five, hammer back, seven, eight, five on the D, hammer seven, pull back off to five, and then eight on the uh, A string. So these licks, there's just so much going on with them. Just like that. All right, next lick. All right, so this is going to start three notes per string lick, legato, ascending at first. So, so across the D minor scale. So we're going to have. Uh, one, three, five on the low E. So I'm picking the first note and the hammer on the next two. Same thing on the A. And then two, three, five on the D. And then the same thing on the G. Two, three, five. So. And then he's going to jump up here, play three, five, seven on the G, and then five, six, eight on the B, and five, six, eight on the high E. And then here he kind of goes back down. So, kind of goes down, back six, five on the B, I mean, so the high E. Then, then um, eight, six, five on the B, and then go eight on the B, five on the high E, back to that eight on the B. Kind of end it with this. And then you're kind of good to go. So just. That's not, I, just, I, I kind of target that note, and anything in between after I get the top note doesn't really matter. All right, and then, and then six five on the B string, and that leads us into this little trill line up the G string. So that's going to be a trill between six and seven on the G, and then seven and nine, nine and ten. 10 and 12, so then 12 and 14, 14 and 15, 15 and 17, and 17 and 19. All right, and then we get to this little melody. It's kind of really kind of closing out the solo here with it. So that's going to... So, so we go 17, 18 on the B string, over to 19 on the G. And then again, 18, 17, 18 on the B, over to 19 on the G. Um, and then we have this little... So that's just a quick little 17 to 18 hammer pull on the high E string. Then over to uh, 20th fret on the B, back to that 17th fret on the high E. And then you're going to pull off 20 to 18 to 17 on the B, and then kind of work your way back up to that 17th fret on the high E string, and then come back down again. So it is. And then into a bend at the 20th fret on the high E string. Release the bend and pick it again, and then go 18, 17. And then here we start that quick little descending lick, which is, he does stuff like this a lot. It's kind of like he takes the same lick and just moves it chromatically. So the lick that he's doing is the 20th fret on the high E to 18 to 17. So, I do that 18, 17, then go. So you're just playing 20, 18, 17, and then take that exact same thing and move down two fret, on one fret, and then another fret. And just try to go as fast as you can. And when he gets here, he uh, 
He does this little five to six on the high E string, pull back up to five, over to eight on the B, back to that five. Then you get that five, come back down to eight, six, five on the B, and then down to the seventh fret there on the G, and then he kind of does the same thing in octave up. And I'm kind of just doing it like that an octave low. It's just the third fret on the, high, on the G string, hammer three, pull back off to two, over to five on the D, back to that three on the, I mean a two on the, the G, and then. And then go five, three, two on the D, on the, um, on the D string, and then over to the five on the A, and then we kind of get that in the little ending phrase. starts really kind of fading out here, but we have seven, five, three, two on the D string. And then five, three on the A. And then five, three, one on the low E string. Slide into the uh, fifth fret on the uh, A string. It's really fading out here, but one of the coolest licks, especially in the live version, you just keeps going off, which I've done in a different video, I believe. Uh, but we're just gonna... You kind of hear that's the last thing you can really hear, which is just five, three, five on the A, over to three on the D, then five, three, five on the A again. Yeah, I've listened to the live stuff a lot. Anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed this, this little note for note breakdown of Mr. Crowley. It is very much worthy. I'm still trying to get all of Randy Rose's, everything he's ever covered with Ozzy done as a lesson. I'm still, it's a main goal for mine. I got a few tracks left to do, uh, but I thought that we should go ahead and redo this one too, since it's just such a massive hit. And I redid Crazy Train as well. Uh, we have to get these done and, and updated so they're more, <laughs> Uh, you know, they don't look like they were filmed literally in a closet like they were filmed in a closet. Um, uh, professionally done, and then uh, I'll get to the rest of the stuff. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.